Hey everyone, it's your teacher Sophie and today in this video I'll be talking about a new kind of expository writing or as they say in British accent expository writing and in specific I'll be talking about cause and effect paragraphs. Okay, don't worry guys, I will explain all the steps and the stages of writing uh, so that you can write your own paragraphs easily without facing any single problem. Okay, let's start. First of all, we need to know the objectives and the activities. First of all, you need to review the concept of expository writing of course we took it before so that we have so now we are going only to review it and we took the cause and effect relationship of course mm -hmm. and it took like uh, uh, I uploaded um, a worksheet I uploaded um, a PowerPoint lecture okay and we talked about it um, you have to also like get introduced to a new kind of expository writing, uh, identify cause and effect paragraphs, fill in a cause and effect graphic organizer. You know the graphic organizer, of course you do. You have to use the information filled in graphic organizer to write a cause and effect paragraph. By what? By following the steps of writing. Last but not least, you have to fill in a checklist. You know? Of course you know the checklist. Let's review. When I say expository writing or expository writing, what do I mean by that? Oh, it is a type or kind of writing that is used to explain, to explain, give information, I mean true pieces of information or facts, or inform. Mm-hmm. The creator, writer, or author of an expository text or a paragraph cannot assume, cannot be sure that the reader has prior knowledge or previous knowledge that he or she knows about this topic that is being discussed. I will suppose that he or she does not know any single detail. Hmm? any single fact about what I'm talking about in the paragraph. So I have to, so he or she must provide the reader, the writer must provide the reader with clear facts and information relevant or related to the topic. Aha, uh -huh. great. Let's move on. Now let's review the cause and effect relationship. When I say cause, is the reason, right? When I say effect, is the result. That's all you need to know. Why did this thing happen? Because of what? Hmm? And here, what was the result of this reason? What happened? That's the effect. That's all you need to know, okay? And they are hmm, connected. I can't have a result without a reason. I can't have an effect without a cause. Huh? Keep this in mind. I can't have a reaction without an action. Hmm? So, the relationship, what? is really tight. I can't have uh, one without the others, okay? So I can't have an effect be, 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 without a cause. And that's why we said there's a relation between them, okay? How about getting introduced to a new kind of expository writing, okay? Mm. Let's do this. But first, you need to know that the three main types or kinds of 
expository paragraphs are informative. That's when I'm only giving information and facts, three pieces of information, as we did in class. We took it, okay? And you gave me a lot of facts about your favorite animal and we wrote a paragraph, remember, in the booklet? Yes. And we're done with that, bye-bye. It's time to get introduced to a new kind or type, which is cause and effect paragraph. How to write it, what are the steps of writing, and all the needed details, okay? And finally, we have a comparison contrast uh, paragraphs, but we're gonna talk about them later on. Now focus on the cause and effect paragraph. Let me give you an example, just to remind you with the cause and effect relation. Uh, here I have jump in the pool or in pool is the cause and get wet is the effect, right? Yeah. Why did I get wet? Duh, because I jumped in the pool, right? What was the result of jumping in the pool? Duh, I got wet. See? That's how it goes. Now, here in this slide, I'm going to tell you what is a cause and effect paragraph. What do I mean when I say cause and effect paragraph? Let's check. A cause and effect paragraph tells how one event or the cause leads to another one, which is the effect. In other words, your paragraph focuses on the effects that happen as a result of several or many causes. See? Mm -hmm. If I don't have a cause, I won't have an effect. Okay? Uh-huh, that we reached the most important part, which is the stages of writing a cause and effect paragraph, okay? What are the stages of writing a cause and effect paragraph? What are they? Uh-oh, the first stage is called pre-writing. And when I say pre, hmm, means before. Before I write my paragraph, I need to do something. Let us check. To organize your thoughts, ideas, and information, you have to go through the pre-writing stage in which you have to fill in a cause and effect paragraph, sorry, graphic organizer. You have to fill in a graphic organizer and we used to do so a lot together, right? Yes, let me remind you with the graphic organizer. Uh-huh, that's called a graphic organizer. What do I have in it? I have a topic sentence, causes or reasons, and effects which are the results. And finally, you have the concluding sentence, right? Right, when I say topic sentence, it's the most important sentence in the whole paragraph. And most of the times it is the first, very first sentence, okay? And I write, when I write it, I have to take into consideration, I have to mention the topic, which is I'm talking about what, and the main idea, in specific, I'm talking about what, hmm? And I have to mention causes and effects of a certain topic. Mm -hmm. And I have to end and sum up everything by writing a concluding sentence, which is the last sentence. Hmm? Yes. And here you have to take into consideration that each cause in the first column must have a reasonable effect related to it in the facing column. That's right. 
because they are connected and we said that wait but first from where should i get the needed information to fill in the graphic organizer huh what do you think from where think oh i know let me share it with you oh from books of course mm -hmm. from the internet you can browse and surf the internet you can ask mr google type whatever you want about your topic and you're gonna have all the facts that you need and the information that you need or from videos you're just gonna like go and um type anything on youtube and then when you watch the video the content of the video is going to help you get information okay that's right these are cute i love them yeah now the second stage is called through writing through writing and during this stage you have to what don't be shocked don't worry i will explain okay and ta-da oh come on miss sophie what are all these points for god's sake don't worry my loves miss sophie is going to explain every single point chill okay first of all we need to write an attractive title of course related to the topic and we shouldn't forget that we have to capitalize the important words in it right of course yeah then you have to provide your paragraph with a catchy topic sentence in which it states clearly the details are going to handle the causes and the effects of a certain topic. Is that right? Of course. Next, we need to write the causes and the effects that have been filled where in the graphic organizer hmm? as supporting details. Remember? Yeah. After that, we need to provide each cause and effect with an example. Mm hmm explanation example or explanation so i'm going to give an example or i'm going to explain the point itself to support the idea and we have to use the following transitional signals or signal words to combine to combine and join your sentences for example to begin with, when I want to start talking, for example, about the causes. To begin with, the first cause of blah, blah, blah is, hmm? let's check the other signal words or transitional signals. We have in addition and moreover. When I'm adding information, mm -hmm. because for instance, when I'm giving the reason, Consequently, as a result, so when I'm telling or giving the effects of this topic, okay, that I'm talking about. Finally, you close your paragraph with a suitable, appropriate, concluding sentence or clincher to what? To sum up what you've stated above. Mm -hmm. and i will tell you something you can you can write um the same as the topic sentence but restate it huh? play on the words see yeah you can replace some of the words hmm? and write a concluding sentence as the topic sentence but i just what well, i have to play on the words to use synonyms for example huh 
words that have the same meaning. Different words that have the same meaning. Hmm? Not to repeat myself. It's going to be boring. Yeah, we'll see more when I explain the next step. Okay. Now, the third stage is post writing. Post. Hmm? I wrote the paragraph. Now, what, what do I have to do? This stage is really important. Why? For it allows you because of what? See, here I have a reason. For it allows you to review your work and fix your flaws and mistakes before publishing your final work uh -huh. and what do i have to do during this stage to fix my flaws even to recognize my flaws then fix them or mistakes during this stage you have to fill in the following checklist right yeah remember the checklist yay woohoo that's it I just tick, I check. When everything is right and okay, I do it. If not, I go back, fix it, make sure I did, and then I tick, I tick it, okay, or check it. Let's read. I have to ask myself, hmm, did I write a suitable catchy title? Did I capitalize all the important words? Did I? If yes, I just tick it. Did I write an impressive, ooh, catchy topic sentence, straightforward to the topic, talking about the main idea? Hmm? Did I provide my topic sentence with causes and effects and supported them with details and examples? Uh-huh. Did I? I move on. Did I use the suitable transitional signals, the appropriate signal words to combine and join the sentences and the ideas? Did I? I move on. Did I use the correct punctuation marks? Like when I'm writing a statement, I use a period. When I'm writing um, um, an exclamatory sentence, I use the exclamation mark to show the strong feelings. And uh, maybe when I'm surprised, when I'm showing strong feelings, remember? Uh, when I'm asking a question, I have to use a what? A question mark. Remember? Kinds or types of sentences. Yeah. Now, did I misspell any word? Did I? I don't know. I go back to the paragraph that I wrote. I check. Hmm? When I find mistakes, I just fix them. Last but not least, did I end up my whole paragraph with the appropriate concluding sentence? Hmm? Did I? I go and check. Uh huh. That's the last stage, which is publishing. After proofreading your paragraph, fixing the mistakes, and filling in the checklist, it's time to write your paragraph how neatly, mm -hmm, with a legible handwriting. Mm with zero mistakes and flaws. Ooh, of course, because when I proofread, guys, I will, what? Find a lot of mistakes and errors. I will find plenty of them. I just fix them. Hmm? I circle them. I fix them. And then I go to the final stage, which is what? Publishing my work. I write it neatly with a legible handwriting and with zero mistakes and flaws. Mm -hmm. And then I give it to my teacher, for example. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. 
that's what regarding the steps of writing these are the things that you need to know regarding the steps of writing a cause and effect paragraph okay hmm. how about writing a cause and effect paragraph together hmm. what do you think guys would you like to do that? Would you like to do that with me? Together? Together, 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 everyone. Together, together. Come on, let's have some fun. Wow. Yes. Let's try to do it. Okay. Here, we have to choose the topic that we are going to write about in our paragraph. That's the first thing we need to decide. We're gonna talk about what? So, today's topic is about water pollution. It's about what? Water pollution. Remember water pollution when we talked about um, the turtles that were dying in, in the Gulf of Mexico? poor turtles because of the polluted water, because people were polluting water, and because of oil spills from ships, you know? Yeah, they got sick, and they started to die. Yeah, that's right. Because of water pollution. So we need, because the water was polluted, right? But I need to search for the reasons, huh? the causes, and mention that, okay, in one paragraph. But let me ask you a question. What is water pollution? What do I mean when I say water pollution? Let's check. Contamination of water by harmful substances which affects life on Earth is termed as water pollution. Miss Sophie, what's the meaning of contamination? Teacher, what do you mean by harmful? Don't worry guys, Miss Sophie is going to tell you. Contamination means pollution, okay? So instead of saying pollution, you can say contamination. Now you have a new word. You can add it to what? To the bank of words that you have. Hmm? And you can replace contamination with pollution. What about harmful? When I say harmful, it means dangerous. Ooh dangerous substances, toxic substances, for example, okay? Now, we are going to watch the following video to get the necessary information in order to fill in the graphic organizer. Remember, I told you that you need to go check some books, browse or surf the internet, um, watch some videos to get what? Information and facts, right? Let's check. water pollution. Contamination of water by harmful substances which affects life on earth is termed as water pollution. Due to human activities, our water is getting more and more polluted day by day. 
household garbage is disposed into various sources of water. Many people perform their domestic activities like bathing, washing clothes, and utensils, etc. in these sources of water. Yay! No, stop! Don't do that! Also, industrial wastes are discharged into the water leading to water pollution. Oh. Consumption of this polluted water leads to diseases like cholera, See, I'm giving diabetes, examples. diarrhea, etc. in hmm. human beings. Polluted water also adversely affects the aquatic life. That is, animals and plants living in water. To make sure that we do not pollute water. Uh -huh. So the video. In the video, they were talking about water pollution. They were talking about the causes and the effects of water pollution. Okay, and they mentioned two causes and two efforts. And now we are going to use the content of this video to fill in the graphic organizer. Let's check. Use the video that you've watched and your acquired knowledge, the things that you already know, to fill in the following graphic organizer with the necessary information. Okay, let's start. As we said, we need to write a topic sentence, two causes, reasons, effects, results, and one concluding sentence. Okay, let us check the topic sentence. Oh, there are several or many causes of water pollution. Mm -hmm. Let's stop here. Did I mention that I'm, I'm going to be talking about water pollution in my pedigraph? Yes. Which in turn leave behind serious effects on both nature and humans. Oh, wait a bit, Miss Sophie. Wait, stop. Did I mention that my pedigraph is going to be, uh, be talking about water pollution? Yes, this is one. Did I mention that I'm going to talk in specific about the causes and effects of water pollution? Yes. Huh? Uh huh. So, is this a suitable topic sentence? Yes, of course. And instead of saying causes, I can say reasons. Instead of saying water pollution, I can say contamination. See? I can play on the words. I can say instead of serious, maybe dangerous or harmful. Hmm? I can play on the words. Oh, that's nice. Now, regarding the causes that were mentioned in the video or from the things that I already know from my acquired knowledge, okay? Let's see. One is throwing wastes, bottles, and plastic bags into water. And you all know that. Right? Of course. Because some people, irresponsible ones, they what? They throw wastes, plastic bags into water. Hmm? Yeah. The second cause is discharging or throwing industrial wastes into the sea. And we saw that in the video, right? from industries and uh, factories. Now, what are the results? Water pollution causes what? Causes dangerous diseases to people and it affects the marine life. That is, animals and plants living in water, in the sea, in the ocean, river, whatever, okay? Now, last but not least, we have the concluding sentence to sum up, that's going to sum up everything in one sentence, the clincher. Oh, nice. Miss Sophie used one of the transitional signals or signal words. In conclusion, comma, 
if we don't take the problem of water contamination into consideration, our life is going to be in danger. Exclamation mark. Oh, this is serious, guys. And see here, I use instead of water pollution, contamination. Not to repeat myself, yeah? Great. Now, what I'm going to do in the next step is to use the information that I filled here and write my paragraph. Let's see how we are going to do that. Let's read the instructions here. Use the information that you filled in the graphic organizer to write a well-organized cause and effect paragraph in not more than six to seven sentences. In not more than what? Six to seven sentences. Let us try to count them. Hmm? The first sentence is the topic sentence, right? This is one. I have two causes. It means two sentences. These are three sentences. Two effects. These are five sentences. And the clincher or concluding sentence, what? These are six sentences. So six to seven sentences. Okay? Don't forget to. Don't forget to write a title, of course, a suitable topic sentence, causes and effects about the chosen topic, signal words, we're not gonna, we're, we're not supposed to uh, forget using them, and the appropriate concluding sentence. Mm -hmm. Before moving to the next slide, check this whale with me. Poor animal. It has trash and plastic bags. Yeah? Oh my God. Yeah, because of the contaminated water, because of the polluted water, because of all the waste that people are throwing in the ocean. That's why he's saying, he's sending a message here, stop trashing the ocean. Hmm? Stop throwing trash, garbage, and waste. Uh, it's going to die sooner or later. Now, here I will write my paragraph. Here I will join all what I wrote in the graphic organizer huh? and make them as one paragraph using full meaningful sentences. And of course, I will start my paragraph by writing a title. What's the title here? Oh, oh. simply, I'm talking about water pollution. So I can write water pollution in the title. See? And I wrote, um, sorry, I underlined letter W and P because you need to know that we have to capitalize the, what, the important words in the title, right? Yeah. Don't forget that. You're going to lose marks when you forget. Keep this in mind. Now, I'm going to display the paragraph that I have prepared for you, okay? Uh -huh. Miss Sophie, did you, and then did you leave a space before you start? Yes, I did. Did you start your um, paragraph with a capital letter? Yes, I did. See, please guys, please, 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 don't forget to leave a space at the beginning. Don't put an arrow, just Leave a space as I did here, okay? And start your paragraph with a capital letter, okay? Let's read. There are several causes of water pollution which in turn leave behind serious effects on both nature and humans. Let me ask you a question. Did I bring the topic sentence that I wrote in the graphic organizer and I just copied it here? 
Yeah, just copy it. It's a full sentence. Bring it and copy it here. Okay? Now, after the topic sentence, we agreed that we have to start with the causes. Causes of water pollution. Here, see, I have something here in a blue color. To begin with, I use the signal word, a transitional signal, comma. One of the causes of water pollution is throwing waste bottles and plastic bags into water, right? Another cause here, I finished the first cause, I put a period, okay? And I move to the other one. Another cause, I'm adding information, is discharging or throwing industrial waste into the sea. Right? Yeah. I also, I got it from the graphic organizer and I put it here in a full meaningful sentence. Okay? Another cause is discharging or throwing industrial waste into the sea. Period. I'm done. Now I have to start with the but, with the effects. As a result of all these reasons, comma, the contamination of water causes dangerous diseases to people, period. Hmm? The contamination or pollution of water causes dangerous diseases to people. Right? I'm done. I move to the second point. Moreover, also here I'm adding information, it affects marine life. What do I mean when I say marine life? I have to explain. See? That is, plants and animals living in water. Period. I'm done. Now I have to write the last sentence, the concluding sentence, clincher, to sum up everything. In conclusion, comma, if we don't take the problem of water contamination into consideration, hmm? comma, our life is going to be in danger. Exclamation mark. I also copied the what, the concluding sentence that I wrote in the graphic organizer. I just, I bring it, I copy it, and that's all. Okay? Let me repeat, guys. When I say paragraph, all the sentences are what beside each other? They are linked, joined, combined, and connected with signal words. I have to write a title. I have to leave a space. Start with a capital letter. Write the topic sentence, followed by what? The causes. Hmm? Then the effects of these causes. And I end up the whole paragraph by writing the concluding what sentence, the clincher. And as I said, I can play on the words. I can replace a word with its synonym. Like here, instead of saying pollution, I can write contamination. Instead of saying diseases, I can say illnesses. Instead of saying dangerous, I can say harmful. Hmm? That's all. Easy peasy. Hmm? And um, of course, I will check if I missed uh, a certain punctuation mark, like uh, writing a comma or um, a period. Uh, or here, like in the last sentence, I used an um, exclamation mark. Yeah, because this is serious, you know? I'm warning people. Uh huh. So please, please, please try your best uh, to follow these stages and steps to uh, have a well-organized, perfect pedigree.